getting the cruiser engineered. Um, Got to do a swerve test and a brake test. Um, I am going for a GVM upgrade, hence all the weight in the back and the back seat full of sandbags. We have to test the car on that. We'll see how we go. Okay, some frequently asked questions. Hit me. What is vehicle engineering? Well, it's where you've done modifications to your car that are outside the parameters of the law. Um, but this car, as I said, has 75 mil of suspension and 23 inches of tire lift. So therefore, and engineering is getting a vehicle engineer who has a certificate in that field, inspects the car, determines whether the modifications are safe to use on public roads. Why did you decide to get your vehicle engineered? Why did I get my vehicle engineered? Because, well, as everybody knows, the cops have been cracking down. And that's part of the reason, that's probably half the reason I did it. But the other half is because we want to do our lap around of Australia and, you know, Cape York. So, to avoid any sort of issue, I thought I'd just get it engineered. And I know a lot of people will say, you know, a certificate doesn't matter. Yeah, in some cases it doesn't really matter. You know, if the police officer or inspector wants to be a real pain, he can stop you on the side of the road and still deem himself that the car isn't safe. But I guess the bulletproof thing is the certificate so if you do have to go back to your relevant state to clear it well in ACT especially they've already inspected the car with the mods on it according to the report with the mod plate on it so it's going to pass no problem just taking it back instead of for example not having it engineered and having the mods that are on the car you know getting defected in Queensland or northern New South Wales and there's nothing I can do about that. I still have to come back to my relevant state and clear the defect. And if I'm not engineered for those mods on it, well, I've got to strip those mods or get the car engineered at that time, so. What is the difference between ACT engineering and other states? Uh, the difference to my knowledge, which is what my inspector was telling me, is ACT, it's a little bit harder to get the car engineered due to um, an inspection from the government being Access Canberra and it would be RTA New South Wales. So the vehicle engineer has to do a report according to the car for everything that's on it. And then once he's satisfied with that, yourself has to book into uh, Hume, which used to be Dixon back then for ACT. People that live in Canberra will know what I'm talking about and then you get the relevant government inspector to actually look at the car with the report in his left hand and you know just lines the car up with the report where in New South Wales which is what my inspector told me again is a lot easier because you just have to write the report and that's it your car is engineered up to the engineer so you just go to carry that booklet in your car and that's why I think the police officers or inspectors have a hard time in New South Wales, you know, and they get a lot of people is because technically this car could be engineered as a HSV Maloo if it was in New South Wales. It's up to the police officer to pull you over and then do the relevant checks of the report that you should be carrying with you according to the car. You don't get an independent inspection done from RTA in New South Wales or anything like that. So that's why ACT is a little bit more different and a little bit more uh, I guess harder. What did the tests consist of? So the test consists of a lane change test and various brake tests and obviously a report. So the report has to be uh, inspected. The car has to be fully inspected by the vehicle engineer. He's got to deem it safe and structurally good with the workmanship. Then for the lane change test, the conductor LT2 is the code in ACT. 
and it's a lane change in between the 22 point cone test or something like that and it conducts the exit speed of your lane change has to be around 100 110 kilometers an hour and for the brake test if you're upgrading your GBM you have to load your car up so in my instance we put you know a heap of sandbags in the back I think it was one 1.2 ton of sandbags, covered the back seat, covered the back, uh, and then did six brake tests loaded and six brake tests unloaded. And uh, this has factory brakes. How much did it cost? So the engineer report cost $3,400. That could vary between every engineer, but I paid $3,400. That included the track hire, the actual physical report, um, and then you have to pay for an inspection in ACT through Access Canberra, through the modification inspector, which is $74.95. Um, and that was pretty much it. I had to do a few things to the car before I got it inspected. So I think I spent about $30 on super cheap just to tidy up little things. Um, and that's about it. Would you recommend the process? Um, if your car's not too far gone, yes, I would recommend it. Um, it hasn't paid for itself yet, and to be honest, I'll probably never really have an issue, not to it. But yes, just for the peace of mind, cheap insurance. Um, you know, it can, you can even call your insurance company, for example, and they will ask for the engineer's report. And then again, all your modifications are insured if they are outside the limitations of the law already so I would recommend it yes just finished the engineering process on the cruiser mod plate is on um, I just put it next to the compliance plate up there it's just got to go on your body um, where it can't be removed so you know not on any doors not on your on your bonnet nothing like that um, the inspector had a laugh and said I've actually seen people put it on their sun visors before so we said don't do that just put it um on a fixed panel on your body so those of you uh with a keen eye would have noticed um i've got some dirty lights on now alloys um they are a zero offset still on a 315 75 16 but i had to do these a because i kind of wanted to switch to alloys and b um the zero offset um those of you will know some of you in the last videos I used to run sun raises and I probably still will because I still have those rims on a bigger trip you know if we do the cape or something even though I do have a spare on the back with the dirty light I've still got five uh, actually six sun raises black ones so the reason I couldn't keep them was because the rear obviously with the 70s you get the shorter rear axle I had neg 55s or neg 50s for the sun raises, which track corrected it. Um, so I went and seen the engineer and he said, look, that's way too much. You've gone hundred mil total on your rear. Obviously he knows about the, the shortened axles on the Land Cruisers and he goes, you just can't do it, um, unfortunately. So I just went and got zeros. I wanted alloys for a little while anyway. Um, they do make the car look better, I think. Um, but for practicality, I don't know, I still kind of like the sun raises, you know, the fixable on the side of the track if you're in Cape York or anything like that. And the chances of tyre shops having a black sun raiser, you know, it's a, what 60% more chance than having alloys. And these ones, being the dirty lights in a 16 inch and a 5150 stud pattern, you know, I'm going to be waiting a week if I go up north just to get one of these. Uh, I've got the zeros on all around now but as i said I had the neg 55s on the back as the black sun raises um let me tell you i had them since the car was brand new so the day i brought the car home from the dealership um i think it was about 30 k's from the dealer my house so got home the car said 31 kilometers or something like that um took the standards off which are sitting up there still the little split rims and I put the neg 55s with the 285s back then, 285, 75, 16 tires. So I didn't really notice an issue. Um, it was 
drives really well and it was great. Um, until I put the zeros on all around being three weeks ago, four weeks ago now. So the back was narrower than the front by 100 mil. And it was honestly, I was correcting the car. Just on normal road, it was just, it was doing this. That's what I thought it was doing. I constantly had to adjust my steering, um, you know, because the back was shorter. And to me, I thought, oh no, I've ruined the car. I thought it all came down to the rims are lighter, maybe. Um, did I take weight out? I don't know. It tracked really bad. And that was the first time I ever felt um, the issue of the tracking of the 70s that the people talk about. As I said, I only drove home from the dealership. So, you know, it was only 30 Ks with the split standard rims on. And I didn't think nothing of it because brand new car, brand new feel, technically. But um, only from owning the car for so long now and always having the track corrected offset rims on it, towing a trailer, builder's trailer and everything, I thought it was perfect until I went two zeros and it was bad. You know, you can see how it sticks there. So that was an issue I was having with the engineer as well. Um, you know, it's got to be, guards have got to cover all your rims and your tires. So the furthest point of your tire, a guard's got to be covering it. So there's actually quite a lot of laws that I learnt about that I actually had no idea. Um, for instance, is these mounts on the bull bar you know, this is an ARB bull bar, they come with these mounts here. Because it's behind the bull bar, it's legal. So you can you can put your aerials there up to a certain height as well. Um, but for instance, as an example, this bracket here, if this was switched around, so this aerial for the cell fire was here, it would be illegal. Um, and I'd just have to either take it off or switch it around. Um, even lights, you know, lights above 1200, um, there's protocols you've got to follow to have them above 1200 um, on a relay or you've got to specifically say what they're for. Um, but yeah, this just snuck in um, according to the VSB14 and the NCOP just. So your headlights, they can't be more than 1200, 1 1.2 meters off the ground on a flat surface. And these snuck in at 11.70, so I'm 30 mil short, luckily. Um, you can angle them down, but if you angle them down, the inspectors have to see what bracketry you're using to angle them down, if it's gonna work, all that sort of jazz. And the same for the tires. Tires is a big one for engineering. Um, so these are 315-7516, it's a 34.8 inch rim, or 34.6. Standard on these, I'll just show you, has a few options, which is right here on the door card. Um, the middle one, which is a 2259516, that's actually the biggest, not the 265. So a Troopy or a 76 wagon, um, the Workmates, they come with the split rims, which is a 225.95. So the GXLs, I haven't, I don't know what their door cards say, but they have the GXL rims, obviously. And that's a 26575 or 26565, I'm not sure. But that is a smaller diameter than the 225. So anything for the engineering on tires has to go off your diameter. So the factory rolling diameter of the 22595 is 833 millimeters. These 315s are 879 diameter. So when you get it engineered, you have to be within 50 mil increase of your factory. Whatever your door card says, the biggest tire, go off that. 50 mil more, that's what you can run. You know, even people running 325s will be too big. So these just snuck in. So I think I had four mil or something to play with, which is nothing, you know, that could just be the air in the tire or worn down after 20,000 Ks, 30,000 Ks, you know, three mil, well, it's okay. But as a paperwork side of things, whatever it comes out with, and whatever the numbers are on this, regardless, it can't be mil more than 50 mil. So I snuck in with that only just as well. The inspector did tell me um, if I went one more inch, being a four inch lift kit, and then the same tires, an engineer report isn't suffice for ACT. 
I would have to send the card down to Victoria for an independent engineer that they must have a relationship with or has a special report, you know, there's more tests or something like that, I think he said, um, has to be done, which therefore is another cost that accumulates. So, you know, I'm lucky I only went three inch. I didn't even think about that when I bought the lift kit. Um, so it's something to think about, but again, that's one more thing that I just snuck under uh, the limit for ACT. Thanks for watching guys. Please keep in mind, these mods are post rego. So to make your life easier, if you buy a brand new car, seriously think about second stage manufacturing. Anyway, cheers again. Please like and subscribe.